Welcome, fellow adventurers of history, to a tale so extraordinary it defies belief. Nestled within the annals of Parisian lore lies the enigmatic figure of Victor Lustig Master Common, smooth talker, and the audacious architect of one of the most daring schemes of the 20th century. But it's not just any scheme that earned Lustig his place in infamy. It's the breathtaking feat of selling the Eiffel Tower. Not once, but twice. Join me on a journey through the shadowy alleys of Paris and the depths of one man's imagination as we unravel the captivating saga of the man who sold the Eiffel Tower twice, Victor Lustig, a name synonymous with cunning and deception. Imagine a man who not only sold the iconic Eiffel Tower twice, but also managed to outwit notorious figures like Al Capone. Lustig's story is a tapestry woven with audacity and finesse, a tale that transcends mere criminality to embody the art of the con. Born into poverty in the quaint town of Hostin, Austria-Hungary, in 1890, Lustig's early years were humble, but his ambition knew no bounds. He honed his craft through small-time scams before setting sail across the Atlantic, where he would orchestrate his infamous money box scheme aboard ocean liners shuttling between Europe and America. The money box, a seemingly miraculous device fueled by the promise of radium, purported to replicate dollar 100 bills. In reality, it was nothing more than a clever ruse, containing only a handful of genuine bills that gradually lost their value, leaving unsuspecting victims none the wiser. But it was in the City of Lights, Paris, where Lustig truly showcased his unparalleled skills as a con artist. Posing as a high-ranking government official, he orchestrated an elaborate hoax, convincing eager metal dealers to purchase the Eiffel Tower under the guise of dismantling it for scrap metal. The audacity of such a scheme is almost unimaginable, yet Lustig executed it not once, but twice, leaving his marks bewildered and empty-handed. Yet, like any true master of deception, Lustig's ambition knew no bounds. Crossing the Atlantic once more, he set his sights on America, where he established a sophisticated counterfeiting ring. His forged dollar 100 bills were so flawless that they even fooled seasoned bank tellers, prompting concerns from the government about the stability of the nation's currency. The first sale of the Eiffel Tower. Picture this. Back in the 1920s, there was a cunning guy named Lustig who cooked up an outrageous plan involving none other than the iconic Eiffel Tower. You see, he found out that the tower was getting old and needed heaps of pricey fixes. So, he hatched a scheme to sell it off, pretending to be a big shot from the Parisian government. Lustig didn't just stop there. He went all out to make his tale seem real. He faked official papers, held meetings in posh hotels, and even convinced scrap metal dealers that the government wanted to scrap the tower to save cash. But here's the kicker. He openly offered to sell the Eiffel Tower to anyone who'd tear it down for scrap. And guess what? A trader named Andrew Poisson took the bait handing over a hefty bribe of around $70,000 in cash, which would be worth a fortune today. The twist? After forking over the cash, Poison realized he'd been swindled. He was so embarrassed that he kept quiet about it. Imagine falling for a scam that big. Victor Lustig wasn't one to give up easily. After his first attempt to sell the Eiffel Tower, which ended in a hefty payday, he decided to try his luck again. But luck wasn't on his side this time. Just when it seemed like he was about to seal the deal with another unsuspecting victim, the cops caught wind of his scheme. They swooped in and chased him out of the country before he could pocket any more cash. Lustig didn't let this setback stop him. He made his way to the United States, where he continued his life of deceit. One of his most infamous targets, none other than the notorious gangster Al Capone. Lustig sweet talked Capone into a shady business deal, promising to double his money. But perhaps realizing the danger of crossing a man like Capone, Lustig eventually returned the money, claiming the plan had fallen through. It just goes to show, even the slickest con artist can't win them all. Lustig met his end due to his insatiable thirst for wealth. He usually managed to outsmart the law, but one fateful night, FBI agents Firestone and Gruber caught up with him. After a tense chase through the streets, they finally nabbed him. A judge in New York slapped him with a hefty 20-year sentence but fate had other plans. Tragically, just two years into his sentence, Lustig succumbed to pneumonia while locked up in Alcatraz. It was a sudden and unexpected end for the master common. As we reach the end of this captivating journey through the life of Victor Lustig, the master of deception, let's reflect on the highs and lows of his daring exploits. From selling the Eiffel Tower to outwitting Al Capone, Lustig's story is one of intrigue, adventure, and ultimately, downfall. But his legacy lives on, a testament to the allure of the con artist and the thrill of the chase. 
As we close this chapter, remember to stay vigilant and never underestimate the power of a well-crafted scam. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling ride. And until next time, stay curious, stay cautious, and stay tuned for more captivating stories.